shaking the place too much. It was just getting a little, uh, just didn't quite know how to handle it. Anyway, what was I saying about my ambivalence about this new way of, um, of, of, of uh, um, sharing our music with you? <laughs> anyway, we're happy to be here. I, all I know is that uh, my relationship with, uh, with uh, the River Raisin Ragtime Review and with uh, William Pemberton, um, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do my best to keep things rolling even though we can't be together. I had, a, I had such a blast in, uh, gosh, it seems like forever ago. It was BC. It was BC. Everything BC <laughs> seems like so long ago. Um, it was August, I think, and uh, went down there, and, uh, up there, sorry, went up there to Ann Arbor and had a blast doing a, a program of, um, of uh, well, it was not just General Morton, it was kind of a New Orleans themed program where we had uh, General Morton. Um, we did a couple things by uh, A.J. Piron's orchestra. Um, the band played some uh, some really old time stuff, "Woe You Heifer" and things like that. It was, it was really cool, and, um, and we were. Um, and then, of course, copious amounts of Jellero Morton, including a wonderful uh, new orchestration that we debuted of the exotic Gan Jam. That was an amazing experience for me. Uh, oh, Egyptian Egyptian fantasy. We might have been again. And I just had a blast. And um, so when, when William reached out and asked me if I would be involved in one of the respites with Ragtime, I thought, well, that would be great. And I hadn't seen my friend Chris Tukarski in months. And I, I thought to myself, you know, I, I can probably play some Ragtime by myself. But you know what? It's just not that compelling. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I thought about it. I tried. I was like, uh, I have to okay, agree. so, so. Um, <laughs> To, to do this with me because just I, I tend to I tend when I'm playing by myself I, I tend to actually sound lonely and dour because I am so I, I didn't want to I didn't want to be uh, I wanted our ragtime concert to be kind of uh, 
of, well, a respite. So I wanted to be a little bit cheery. So I brought Chris along, and today is super special because it happens to be the birth anniversary of one of New Orleans' great clarinetists, Albert Nicholas. So I thought, wow, this is incredible. What a coincidence we get to celebrate um, Albert Nicholas, and who was kind of one of those uh, transitional figures uh, who kind of uh, was listening to ragtime as a kid growing up in New Orleans, and then when he left, he ended up uh, becoming one of the uh, one of the first musicians that we think of as jazz, a jazz musician. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about Albert Nicholas's New Orleans, but um, uh, I think what I want to do is uh, we'll start with uh, we did that was a Jello Morton thing called New Orleans Joys, and actually we're going to slow it down and get a little bluesy here with a, a beautiful ballad by Morton that Albert Nicholas uh, helped him record um, in New York. This is uh, Sweet Substitute. Chris first? Yeah. Okay. I'll play an intro with a pad. Okay. Thank you. 
So, uh, Chris, I apologize. I didn't have time to get the piano tuned for you. It's all right. I'm used to it. Yeah, I'm not sure you are. Um, but anyway, you, you sound great. It is really fabulous to see you. Thank you. Uh, it's Likewise. Been, you've done a little traveling, you know? You actually, you went and visited your folks. Yeah. In Texas for down. a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, I've been all over. So. How's, how's, how's it seem out there? You know, I haven't left the house in three, in three months, so I, I, I just don't know what, what's happening out there. Is there anything you have to happen? Uh, I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris and I have some, some big plans, I'll tell you that. We, we, you think we have good, big plans before all this hit the fan. Um, we have big plans now. We are going to do something with Jell-O Morton's music that hasn't been done since Jell-O Morton was playing music here in New Orleans. And, we're not going to spoil the surprise, but keep an eye on us. Uh, um, we're going to we're going to do it, aren't we? Are we going to do it? It's a surprise to me too. <laughs> Come on, my big idea! Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You forgot about my big yeah, idea, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Right. You that's forgot right. about my that's big right. idea. <laughs> that's right. That's all right. We, you know, now you know what now you know what 2005 brain seems like. You know, we all had 2005 brain. It was uh, basically PTSD. So after after the flooding of New Orleans. It was about a year. I could not remember. I, I had no short-term memory. I couldn't. I had. I had no idea what day of the week it was. I. I. Uh, uh, I you know, it's just a just a disaster. I feel like my that that side of my brain is, is coming back. That uh, that side of my brain that just can't remember anything. Uh, fortunately, I remembered. Uh, I remember most of that melody. You know, uh, <laughs> let's play. Let's play a ragtime piece for our friends. Okay. From R four. All my all our ragtime friends uh, who are uh, who are who are enjoying us through the magic of Facebook, um, we're gonna do a Scott Joplin piece for you. We rehearsed it a little bit for you uh, live, but we're gonna really have some fun with it now. This is and this is this is gonna so we'll start off kind of pretty straight ragtime, and as we as we evolve and devolve, we'll kind of get <laughs> in, we'll kind of get into sort of the way that ragtime ended up getting played when it went from. Um, the three musicians, when, when, it's, when it went from this kind of 2-4 uh, uh, time into this sort of cut time that, that made it a little bit easier to play for, as the dancing styles changed. You know, Foxtrot was just right after the kind of the end of ragtime. And so the, the musicians, they started rhythmically approaching the ragtime a little bit differently. So we're going we're gonna to do a, we're gonna do a uh, Scott Joplin uh, classic here called The Pineapple.
direction. It looks like I'm actually looking away from you, <laughs> so I'm kind, of, I'm kind of having to pretend. That I'm, hey, Chris! <laughs> but, but actually, Chris, Chris is actually over here. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's a little confusing. It's a, I'm trying not to cross that, cross that line. <laughs> um, that was delightful. That was. I hope you enjoyed that. The, the uh, pineapple rag and the little creolization of that middle section there. I don't know if you know what I mean by that creolization. You know, Jelly Roll Morton called it that Spanish tinge and. Um, so much of uh, so much of New Orleans music, no matter what style of New Orleans music, whether it's the traditional music of New Orleans, uh, the, the modern jazz of New Orleans, the rhythm and blues, the uh, the, the hip hop of New Orleans, you get these you get these wonderful uh, uh, almost Caribbean kind of accents in it. Uh, Jello Morton himself was uh, was uh, I think his his family was was Haitian uh, Haitian descent, mm -hmm. um, Saint Domingue, and um, so we're going to talk about Albert Nicholas because he had a wonderful. Um, uh, a wonderful record, some wonderful recordings that he did with uh, the stride pianist James P. Johnson, um, with some uh, some New Orleans friends, including uh, Warren Baby Dodds and uh, uh, Pops Foster on bass, and the great Danny Barker. And these slides are wonderful. They were actually some of the old Creole tunes that would have been going around, uh, you know, um, at the time. Um, Albert Nichols knew them. Cindy Bechet, who was a neighbor of his, he, he knew them. You know, they actually kind of lived in your, your direction. They're there in the Maryland. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, kind of off of like St. Bernard. Mm -hmm. St. Bernard and some. Yeah. Seven Ford. Ford. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I think Barney Begard may have been in that neighborhood too. Um, but so as kids, they all they all they all knew each other and then around and then um, but what they would do the they would uh, they like to go uptown. Or, I'm, yeah, they like to go uptown where the rougher music was, and they would go out to hear Kid Ory and stuff. Actually, not far from where, like Claiborne and and um, Martin Luther King, oh. there was one place that was, there was a, they had these lawn parties, and the guys used to go over there. And um, by Church's Chicken, yeah, they, yeah, that's <laughs> right. It's not far from Church's Chicken. Um, so they would play these lawn parties, and they got to learn some of that rougher music, and they and they dug some of those things. Um, and so, so these Creole tunes that Albert Nicholas performed, uh, you know, James B. Johnson, he was the only kind of non-New Orleanian in the group, and he didn't really change what he was doing much. Um, but uh, so we'll demonstrate that. So, so Albert Nicholas had this beautiful, delightful, um, very uh, sweet uh, Creole sound that floated on top of that, with some of these rhythms on top of Gerald Moore's dry piano. We do want to let you know. Uh, I'm sorry, William. I'm, I've got you. I got you covered. Uh, we do want to let you know that, that we are actually, we're getting a small honorarium from, from R4 to bring you this respite uh, with ragtime. Um, but William's giving me permission to let you know that if you want to uh, continue to support our, our broadcast, you can, you can do that through the magic of, of PayPal and, um, and Venmo. And then I wanted to let you know that if you also, if you also wanted to support um, the Raisin River Ragtime Review, and their efforts at keeping um, ragtime education and, and keeping musicians engaged in the music of ragtime, well, then I want to make sure that you, you know how to do that too. And then, um, and that would be, uh, that would be here. That would be by going to their PayPal, which is R4 Ragtime. And I hope you'll consider, hey, look, if you can support both of us, great. We're very happy. Um, uh, but if you have to choose, if you have to choose between the two of us, please support my friends um, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, because I like it there, I want to come back. Um, but what they're doing is actually fabulous. We, we uh, the, the idea of uh, performing New Orleans, um, performing New Orleans music and classic ragtime for contemporary audiences uh, in a way that's, that's um, that reminds people uh, of how, how how important it is as a facet of our um, American musical heritage. Uh, I strongly encourage you to support what they're doing. So let's go that. Let's get the. Let's get to that. Um. Uh, let's get to that. Uh, sorry, I'm going nuts. I can't. So this, this, thing is, this thing is too far away from me. I can't push the right stupid buttons. Um, let's, okay, so we're going to demonstrate with this old tune called Les Oignons, the onions. And so it actually, if you're ever in a cab, you're, you're ever in a, a New York cab and your driver happens to be Haitian, he'll, he'll, he'll have learned the song growing up, I promise. It, it's a, it's a, kind of one of those songs that went around. Sidney Bechet recorded his own version of it, but Albert Nicholas's version on this uh, jazz all the Creole stuff with uh, with uh, James B. Johnson is super cool, and Chris is actually going to keep the keep his part pretty straight. 
and I'm going to introduce some of those rhythms on top of it uh, with okay. a, a little Caribbean feel. Here you go. What key are we in? I think we're in B flat. Oh, B flat. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sing the song. She's, hmm. down, she's downstairs, unfortunately, so she, you know, she wanted to sing that. But I might bring her up here for a special song at the end. We'll see if I can talk her into it, if I can, <laughs> if I can uh, make some noise and get her to come up. So isn't that lovely? So there you have that kind of uh, the Creole tune just on top of the regular stride piano, but but you can also do the the, um, the sort of the Caribbean thing in the piano the way Gerald Morton would. And we'll do one more of those uh, Creole songs. This one's called uh, um, Mopaleme Sa. 
and uh, it's really just two chords. So actually, we're just going to demonstrate a little bit, and then we'll, we'll get into a little bit, um, you know, how we how we use those rhythms to kind of transform our, our ragtime. So it goes like this. It's a uh, what are we um, in F. F. Okay. Yeah, it's really only two chords. Just does the you know for for you musicians, it's just the one chord and the five chord. It's, 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 that's Mozart basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, doesn't have the two parts. It doesn't go dink a dink a dink but dink a dink. It actually just goes dink a dink a dink dink a dink a dink a dink a dink a dink a dink. He's gonna show you that on his left hand. Now on top of that, I'm gonna do a little rhythm that incorporates that but plays some notes in between. It goes Why they call it the sync cue because it actually has five parts. So over Chris's part, which is the tracio, because it has three parts. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. And then mine goes one, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I can't even cheat a little bit. I can add a six and go one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Right? So I'll do that a little bit. And I'm going to play the same note. And then I'm going to change it for the chord. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three. And that's all I'm doing the whole time. So if I mix it up with different notes in the chord, then I get this little kind of pattern. This is this is where Albert Nicholas was. He was he was fabulous. He was very good at this. One and two. One two three. That's really all that he's doing. Now, Albert Nicholas would also do this fun stuff. He would use these little chromatic ornaments on his notes so that it would kind of dress it up even a little bit more like this. One, a two, a one, two, three. <laughs> And he would do them up and down. They do it again. Hey, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Let's let's do it in every key. Just just modulate. Just modulate every few bars. Let's just modulate a little few bars. All one, right. Two. One, two, two. <laughs>
that's that's really fun. And um, every key kind of has its own. I don't know for you. Is it the same as, as uh, with piano? Is it the same where every every key kind of has its own yes. uh, things that are a little bit <laughs> yeah. like you can't actually do the same thing right. in in every key. It's so like on some keys, it's easier for me to go. And other other keys, it's easier for me to go. But I yeah. can't really do that. In That's every. why you see some of the runs that Tatum and those guys do right. only in only in certain, certain keys. keys. Yeah, well. Well, your family said that. I love the way you play those rhythms. Anyway, there you get a little idea of those Creole, that, 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 those, those Creole rhythms and those things that Albert Nicholas um, kind of incorporated into, into his, his, uh, his sound and style and why the New Orleans players all had a little touch of that, uh, that thing. Hey, um, what, uh, what can we do? Uh, what can we do? Let's do another Jonah Morton piece to kind of, that kind of shows that off a little bit. How about the Crave? Crave. Yeah, let's do the <laughs> Crave. So this is one of General Morton's Spanish tinge compositions, and you're really going to hear how that habanera rhythm um, just kind of, it just, it just sounds like New Orleans, you know, what can I say? And it's the summertime here, so, so hopefully, our, hopefully our, our groove might feel a little bit humid and a little, <laughs> a little bit sultry. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
brain fart. Oh, that's it's, been, it's been a few yeah. months. <laughs> It's a few months not only just playing this music, but playing with playing with other people. It's a it's, well, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a trip. But, well, I mean, I have been doing a duo broadcast with uh, some of you may know about my duo broadcast with David Tarkanowski. I've been doing that on Sundays, and we're finally getting all this technology um, figured out. And um, but I tell you what, it's not it's not without um, a small level of resentment. <laughs> yeah. You know, it reminds me. You know, when I, I grew up in California. And you know when when I was first taking jobs as a musician, it was kind of a pleasure to learn like my way around town and stuff. You know, oh, I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna drive to you know, wherever. I mean, Southern mm -hmm. California is big. I didn't never it was, it was never it was always different places. And um, but this is different. This isn't just we're gonna we're gonna do another gig. Now it's like we're gonna. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go take that job. I'll just um yeah I'll just have to learn how to drive a car first. That's what it feels like. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, I can I can do that. I can learn how to drive a car. I can learn how to turn my living room into a into a into a jazz club or a nightclub, and you know figure out how to make the lights uh, you know look a little bit decent and how to make the sound sound a little bit decent. And oh yeah, you want video too? Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah I've got because I've got nothing better to do you know, with my time <laughs> than figure all this shit out. No. Anyway, it is what it is, isn't it? Um, what's important, what's most important is that, you know, uh, that we keep, that we're, we're going to keep plugging away at it, but you got to do your part. And the idea is to keep the community together. That's what the purpose of this is. Our four in Ann Arbor, they're doing their part to keep the community together by giving you these rag respites with ragtime, sort of a way of, of just taking a little breather in the middle of the week. A lot of you may have gone back to work and, and whatnot. And then, uh, you know, so to have a little midweek thing where you can just hang out and dig a little, dig a little sort of, uh, should we say music that's happening live? <laughs> um, as opposed to live music. I mean, this is really important. And when things are normal enough, you know, the ragtime works out. I mean, I saw some great videos you all did in your, your, your social, your, in your, isolation or quarantine, whatever you want to call it. Man, the ragtime workers, they've done some really cool videos. The pajama one's hip, and the other one, man, there's some really beautiful you know, ragtime pieces with everybody kind of playing in their own living rooms. It's just amazing. Um, but, so it's our pleasure to be here with you. And while I'm, I'm just complaining about the technology stuff because I'm really crappy at it. <laughs> if I was decent at it, I wouldn't complain as much. Uh, Chris might feel the same way. I just don't even try. I just, <laughs> you gave up. Yeah, you gave up already. Oh, come no, on. No, I, just the cell phone. That's oh, it. Oh yeah. That's about all I can handle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, we love the opportunity to be with you. So, um, one more time, we're going to let you know. Uh, you know how to. Um, uh, we're going to let you know the three ways to. <laughs> going to let you know the three ways to uh, support the music. Um, Clarinet Road on PayPal and Venmo, and of course our friends with. R4, you can dig what they're doing with the magic of PayPal 2 with the um, PayPal uh, R4 ragtime. And I can't wait to be with you all again. Um, we got to cut, we, we're, uh, we're going to play one more. I'll see if I can get, guess I can get Elaine to come up. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to sing, I wanted to sing a song for you. I was going to have, we're going to have a sing along actually one of these days. I'm going to figure out how to use this stuff and we're going to have sing along. I hear a door opening. Oh, here comes a door. Um, hey, Boo. Does Boo Boo want to sing sing a song with me? Oh. It's gonna be a no. What's that? She has paint all over her. Okay, all right. Well, we'll skip that. I'll tell you. We'll do it another time. <laughs> we'll do it another time. Um, let's go out with something pretty for them. Let's go out okay. with something pretty. I, I, I thought we were going to do um, a couple more morning things, but I think I just want to play something real pretty. Um, but, um, ballad? Yeah. How about Memories of You? Yeah, yeah. Or Love Will Find a Way. Or let's do that. Uh, let's, do, let's do this. This is, uh, this is fitting. We're going to close with a piece by Yubi Blake. It was composed in 1921. And I want to thank my friends uh, William Pemberton and the whole gang from the uh, uh, Raisin River Ragtime Review. We want to thank all of you for the for the opportunity to bring you this respite with ragtime. 
I want to thank my friend Chris Tukarski for for just uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you're, and you're that way. Yeah, yeah, you're actually that way. Right. <laughs> I want to thank my friend Chris Tukarski for um for he brought us mask and actually uh you know we're probably uh, well you know it's a it's a small place I, I would say we're probably I, I I'm sorry to confess we might be a little less than six feet away. If you don't see me in two weeks, you might That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're doing our best. That's why we used a split screen, so you couldn't actually tell that. I should have just lied. I should have said, we are on opposite sides of New Orleans. Right. And uh, um, no, anyway, we, we love you all. We want you to stay safe and healthy. Don't let your guard down yet. Um, um, you know, there's no it, it's no, it's no mystery why we're having um, cases pop up in places that, you know, have not done very um thoughtful job of, of reopening their cities and um, and I think that's that, that, uh, that I think if everyone just kind of stays a little vigilant we'll get through this we'll get through this but uh, I don't know I I'd like to be working too but I'd rather be alive than working so uh, so uh, until the next time we see you thank you uh, and um, keep New Orleans in your thoughts we're here we're doing well and the musicians are doing their part to keep you connected um, I have my Sunday broadcasts with David Torkanowski, and uh, Louisiana Music Factory is still the place to go to get some of our music. Chris has right. a couple new ragtime-related CD projects that Indeed. came out right before all this happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that you can check out. Chris Tokarski, it's uh, K-R-I-S-T-O-K-A-R-S-K-I, and um, if you'd like to uh, uh, support our efforts in, in some way, we welcome you to do that. And of course, please support. In Ann Arbor, with uh, with their, the you know the wonderful ways that they're trying to keep everybody uh, connected. So uh, this is a Huey Blake composition, simply called "Love Will Find a Way." I can't think of a more fitting thing to go out on. Here we go. Turn the uh, first. Yeah. Okay. Chewy, you flatter that. F.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you.